was sick of my Do you want us to ah. close anything? Or you're cool? Let's keep it. Okay, cool. cool. I mean, there's an echo in here, so it's not like a bird is going to... You're already talking shit awesome. about my studio. There's an echo in the studio. I'm not. Really? No, I don't believe in soundproofing. I believe in close micing. <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> Just fuck you. I'm in fuck with you mode, dude. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to my voice and not my face. We're at Five Star Sound Labs. Thank you. With uh, Juan Alderete, Nick Reinhardt, Jonathan Hishke. How do you go about making music? Dot hackers up first. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my case, it usually starts with some kind of a collaborative effort with whoever I'm, whoever writes more music than I do. <laughs> but you like to you be know. in, you like to be in on that process? I do. Or, okay. I do. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I've done other stuff, but I prefer to do it with, you know, right. Council or a team. <laughs> right. You know, do you have like standbys that you bring in for a jam or a, or a writing session or anything like that? I guess the reason I ask is because I, always start with a really general swath of kit and then like take things in and out as the songs take shape. Is that Yeah, that's, true? that's how I do it, for sure. Yeah. Lately, with, with these bands, I've been going in, kind of trying to go in with nothing. Mm -hmm. So it makes musical sense first before it makes, uh, before it gets... Like literally like amp chord bass guitar? Yeah, and it doesn't even matter what bass guitar. You know wow. what I mean? Yeah, it's just... So it's all your fingers. I just, I just try to go grab whatever it is and change it up each time and see if it gives me different ideas or something. Yeah. Like that. And then add things as it, as the ideas come, rather than the other way around, which it used to be. Or it's like, I'd have an unlimited amount of stuff on the floor or whatever, or, right. or in the room, and and uh, just mess around until something sounded cool and then go from there, mm -hmm. you know? And then add... Add notes and rhythms from there. Uh -huh. Kind of so, trying to do it the other way now. So what you're saying is that, unlike me, you are such a good player that you can start with no. just an instrument no, 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 no. and make music? <laughs> Certainly not saying that. <laughs> Which I found like, you just the last stole what years. I was gonna say. <laughs> really? Right, really? Go ahead. Well, really? Well, that's interesting. In our band, we probably, I probably the last time like we jammed was like eight years ago. I'm more of just like really low volume like bedroom jam, like and come up like solo jam by myself. You know, just kind of like fart around like constantly just moving fingers and oh whoa this is a weird sounding thing and if it's like a chord or a part then I could kind of just like hear maybe imagine something that would come after that you know so it's it just starts with kind of farting around on a guitar and like any pedals it's just I play it so low volume in my bedroom through like mm -hmm. a rolling jazz chorus that you know it's like any any distortion pedal or fuzz usually and that's kind of about it you know right start coming across, oh, these two chords sound neat together, and then you can arpeggiate them or do whatever and break them up, and then, you know, eventually that two chords turns into 10, and then you, you know, loop some parts, That's and then add anything. Yeah. <laughs> 10 chord chord progressions are pretty cool. I feel like I've probably <laughs> done that once or twice, but. Now, now how, do you, how did you write for that thing, that project that you did kind of oh, yeah. through the mail with, with Mike Watt and all those people? No, so, the project that I did with Mike Watt and Nels Klein and Greg from Deerhoof was weird because that was writing to bass lines. Oh. And that was like the trippiest thing ever because it was just Mike Watt bass lines, yeah. dry, like whatever Pro Tools recordings or something. And so that was really interesting trying to pull like melody out of root notes and Mike Watt style bass lines. Were they to like a drum machine or anything? Or, uh, or I, a click? I think he did have them to a click. I remember being a little bit confused about that because I'm like, wait, what? I couldn't wrap my head around where the downbeat was on some of them and blah, blah, blah. But that, so that was an interesting way for me to write music was to approach it from, you know, way out of my comfort zone of like hearing bass lines first and trying to pull melody and all these ideas out of bass lines. Yeah, I would, I would Nick, I mean, spending like 10 years where we jammed a ton 
And then, you know, Big Sur, I never, we never jam. I find beats or loops or something and I write the music from that. I usually, once I hear a loop, I hear the entire song. The song we had called Nonstop Drummer, I heard that drum loop and I literally heard everything. I heard the bass, I heard the keys, I heard the guitar part, you know, it's just one of those things. Bato Negro, on the other half, is just me jamming with a drummer and me just hitting pedals and seeing where it goes and then we just edit whatever sucked. Mm -hmm. But it's not really songwriting, more Big Sur is songwriting. And then, um, you know, any other things, projects I do, it's usually like, it's just because there's loops there and then I give it bass line and then like Nick said, that somebody else will come in and pull something out of that bass line or whatever. Um, but yeah, I write on guitar, I write on keys, and you know, it just kind of all comes together like that. Um, the so, weirdest thing I think we ever did was with Omar and, and D'Antoni, we were doing what was going to be a Vato Negro record, but we flipped instruments, well, at least Omar and I did, so Omar played bass and I played guitar, and I've never done that, and it's actually the best song out of the seven songs that we wrote together. Sure. And it was just, you know, he was like, wow, it's a wild guitar part. His bass line was super tight and, you know, D still played drums, but, you know, he could definitely help us push it. So that was really cool. You know, you just, you know, it's always good to flip it. I heard there's a guy in a band that actually records his ideas and then flips the tape over or puts it in reverse and then he learns those riffs. Whoa. Mm. And that's the songs. Dillinger Escape Plan, that guy supposedly does. Oh, wow records himself then flips the tape like that's on that's how old i am we flip the cassette <laughs> <Right>. and learn <laughs> the yeah. Yeah. so uh I, i've actually thought about this so when you're writing with dot hacker stuff did someone comes in with core chord progression or like a section or you guys jam or what where what is the genesis of like a dot hacker song well it's that's it's an interesting situation because that band's kind of like all bets are off as far as i guess like either josh will bring in something totally done like like here's everything here's the structure here i have the melodies the, okay. the chord and then you guys find your parts in it and maybe we switch we kind of alter stuff from there you know oh maybe this should go longer but you know or that okay. part's cool let's pull everything else out and that'll be the focus of this or we will somebody will just have a snippet of something and we'll work it into something you know grander hopefully or we jam and pull stuff out of the, like find something good and turn that into a song. It's it's And your bass lines are usually fun. wild. I mean, it could just be like a guitar chord and the bass is doing all this crazy shit all over the place. I mean, does everyone does anyone ever say like, dude, what are you doing? Or is everyone <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Dude, it's well, called it's Jonathan really Noodles. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I love it and I'm glad, I don't know whether or not they say that or not. I'm glad, it seems like they don't, at least on- Well, they- <laughs> They might go, maybe you should wait to have that totally crazy part happen until after this happens or whatever. Right. It's like an arrangement thing, but I don't think anyone's ever changed a note or or, or, or a, an idea. I don't think anyone's like really taken any of my ideas and gone, no. Okay. Which no, is full, nice. no full veto. Right. No, no full right. veto, which is really kind of a... I don't know. I consider it a real privileged yeah, wow. position to be that's, in. Yeah, that's I mean, a magical place to be in. It, it, Especially it was, as a bass player. Yeah, because he, <laughs> we had this talk one time, and he was, I was telling him like, you know, because I heard the first God Hacker record, and he's playing me, and I'm like, oh, like, like he told me how many hours he spent overdubbing his bass, and I was like, they let you do that, and he goes, yeah, and I go, how did you get them to let you do that? And he goes, well, first of all, you'd be in a band with your biggest fans, and. I just had a tear come down my eye, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I was just like, for me, it's just like, get get these bass lines done, all right, out, and you're, you yeah. know, you're done. It's just like, that's not what it's about. It's not about whatever I want to do or right. or whatever. So I've never, I mean, besides Vato Negro or Bixer, which are my own bands, but being in a situation where you can literally carve out your sound for, yeah. you know, a couple of days, it's unheard of. I've never had that in my right. life, unless, well, I did, unless it was my own music, you know? Right. The idea is to ex experiment and kind of, I feel like, cram as many ideas in and then you go, it's almost like reductive. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I don't do this, but those guys will put on layer after layer after layer. There's, they'll spend days and days just adding things. So everything they could think of is in there. And then it's like, 
it helps shape the dynamics, you know. So right. It's just like, oh, I'll call that awesome. Take Wait. this out, take this in, put it in here, do mm -hmm. that, and it right. adds to kind of an orchestrated feeling. And that, and they let me do that with the bass too. But usually, usually I only have like one or maybe two tracks. I mean, that's all I want. Right. Right. You know, right. I want it to be right. like yeah. a bass line that's like really is grounding it and saying something, right. rather than a bunch of random things happening. I mean, I guess it starts with trust too like, i was gonna say that yeah i think that's that's the main part you know yeah if you trust the guy to not play something cheesy or shitty <laughs> you know if you trust the drummer to not do something so you're, you're saying i'm hate. capable of playing shitty shit i guess that's what you guys are kind of getting at. <laughs> no like, oh yeah well so that situation you're talking <laughs> about they just figured that if they gave you the trust you'd play oh, no, shitty no no thing. no i'm not saying like that i'm saying like if there were like four people you all have to trust each other equally Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah, and that's a band. I mean, that's it, a, obviously my situation wasn't like a traditional band. It's right. like, you know, a, a guy who has a vision and then you, you helped him create his vision where, you know, you're in a band and it's like equal say, equal split, equal everything, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. And your band is, Taramel is, is that essentially, right? Or I don't know what it is. Uh, I mean, it is. It sounds like you start <clears throat> the songwriting. So that's, See, I, that's it's always been... Different. An ambiguous thing for me because I don't I will do kind of like a Josh things a lot of times and that's what I was getting at with like the, the not no jamming thing because I feel like when we would jam parts like we just spent literally five hours on like 20 seconds of music and now everyone's and like okay. you know we're cranking <laughs> it. we don't do the thing where like you know we grab a 30 pack of beers and like take breaks and just talk about life you know it's just like no it's four hours of like jamming 20 seconds of music and then it would just get like this sucks you know so <laughs> so i would just be like okay well you know i'll structure like a song kind of like what you were saying where it's like yeah there's four and a half minutes of parts that repeat or do whatever and then email that out to everyone everyone gets the jam on their own bedroom style and then we come together and like you know change things around or flesh it out you know what i mean but so I don't really know. Are you what telling that means. me that you have a drummer that can use a computer? Yeah, <laughs> he does know how to use a computer. Do not lose that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Your craft devices, baby. <laughs>